Hi, okay, we are going to cover the Cooperating Brokerage Firm Separate Contract. This is probably the most important document that you're going to be filling out with your offer. This, of course, is the paper that dictates what you're going to get paid for your services. So if you're representing a buyer, buyer is not paying you, it's actually going to be coming from the seller. The seller has been in agreement with the his listing agent to pay a percentage to sell his house. It's the listing agent that cooperates with buyer agents and pays them a portion of their commission. So you're really your contract here is not with the seller your, or the buyer, your contract is with the listing agent. Okay, so this cooperating broker agreement uh, needs to be filled out and submitted with your offer. So starting with the purchase contract reference date, of course this is going to be the same date that you will have dated your purchase contract. And a lot of times when you're going into zip forms to create your, your purchase contract and all your addendum, you're going to want to attach the cooperating broker agreement as well because the information that you're filling out on your purchase contract is going to go over onto your cooperating broker agreement. So all of this stuff would pretty much be auto filled over. So your seller name if you have it, buyer's name, property reference name, TMK number, all that gets entered, and again you will get this information from the MLS sheet. Okay, so moving down to number one, this is the section that's going to talk about the amount of the commission that the listing agent office is going to pay the buyer agent. So this is a contract really between listing office and uh, selling office, being that buyer agents is uh, works for Elite Pacific Properties. Elite Pacific Properties is the one that's going to be getting the commission. So your contract that you have with the company is one thing, but this is actually the agreement that's going to be done between companies. So that's why the next section talks about the agents involved, and that way the company knows how to uh, who who to compensate through their company. So. Going back to number one here, the percentage is what you're going to put here. Now, if you're looking at the MLS sheet, you're going to be looking down here where it says compensation. And you'll see probably 3%, 2.5%, that type of a thing, which is typically half of what the listing office is getting. So you have a, a seller who wants to sell his property, has agreed to pay his uh, listing agent 6% of the tra uh, of whatever the sell price is, that 6% is going to be split between listing agent and buyer agent. So if you see a number here of 2.5%, then obviously, or you would obviously assume that that means that the, the, the cooperating, sorry, the, uh, the commission is 5%. It's not always the case. Sometimes it could be that the, um, the listing office is getting uh, 2% and maybe 3% is going to the buyer agent. We don't always know that, but in this case, we're just going to talk about the typical uh, scenario, which is look at your MLS sheet, take what's there, and then you would assume that it's half of what the uh, listing office is getting. The other thing to look at as well is whether or not there's GET tax being paid. When you meet with the seller and you're taking a listing, you're going to uh, decide whether or not you're going to charge your seller the GET taxes. Some people do it, some people don't. Uh, so you'll see some listings will say GET tax paid by seller, yes, and some will say no. If you notice that it says yes, that means that the seller has agreed to pay the listing office GET taxes on the percentage that he's paying them to sell the house, in which case you want to make sure you get that GET tax as well, which is actually a little bit more money. So when you go to fill out your form, you're going to put in the percentage that you saw on the MLS, in which case this was more like 2.5% because I just showed you that. So you just put 2.5. And then I kind of always like to spell it out here so that there's no mistake. So 2, oops. Use my typing is terrible. Of sales price plus GET. Now, obviously, if you saw the word no on the listing, if you saw no here, you're not going to want to put that GET here. You're going to make sure that it's not there. Just leave it off. 
<clears throat> the next box here talks about the percentage of the listing brokerage firm is going to share with the cooperating broker firm. Now, like I said, you don't always know what goes on behind the scenes, but the typical way that it works is that whatever the seller agreed to pay the lister to list his house, that is usually split 50-50 between a listing agent and the buyer's agent. Obviously, if it's different and someone has mentioned it, then you might want to change this percentage here. It wouldn't be 50%, it would be something else. But the typical way of doing this, standard way of doing this, is 50%. Okay? The next box down, two and three, talk about who is listing and who is the cooperating broker. So, for example, you're on your MLS and you've got your, your listing agent here. And then, of course, you're the buyer agent. So... Uh, you would take the listing agent information and plug that onto this first line where it says listing brokerage firm. So I just put an Angie agent, but you would put in the real agent there. Now, everything should you should be able to find from Matrix. So if you need to put in that agent number, you're going to see it here. Agent member number 00564 or whatever it is. That number gets plugged into this line here. See where it says member board ID number? So if you don't know that agent's information, you'd need to go to the MLS uh, listing and then it should be right there on the listing. Then you should know what yours is. So you would put your name here and you would put your board member number here. The rest of this is just pretty much disclaimers. You can read over later. Uh, tax reporting agreement. I'm pretty sure that most of the time you're going to want to check this box that the listing brokerage firm is going to request the W-9 from the cooperating broker company. So that usually gets checked. <clears throat> the last section here that gets filled out is the side for the listing brokerage firm. So you would put in the company name here, the address, phone numbers, and then the ID. And again, all of that can be received from the matrix system by uh, clicking over here on agent information. If you just click on the agent name, that will open up the all of the agent information. So you'll have your address, agent ID number, all of the telephone numbers, and fax numbers, email addresses, and then of course the office ID number which is important for filling out this form. So down here where you see office MLS ID, that's where that number would go. So you would fill in all this information, and then of course you would fill out your brokerage information. Uh, and again, if you do this in zip forms, it should almost always be there. But if you're doing it for the first time, you might look at your business card or something. And then our office MLS ID is E-L-I-T. Okay, so that concludes filling out the cooperating broker agreement and make sure that you do submit this along with your um, your offer when you send it in for review and then we're going to cover uh, next how to what the process is with getting your offer to review and then how to get it off to your buyer for signature